power over Ethernet allows us to supply juice, supply a modest amount of wattage over the eight wires that exist in unshielded twisted pair cabling. You can't do this over fiber optic because fiber optic is not conductive. So it's another reason to use unshielded twisted pair cabling. And it's a great technology. You know, we started to see it in around 2000 and it got a lot better over the years. So we're way over a decade of power over ethernet availability in today's technologies. So see this phone? This phone, what we're doing is we're trying to say, yeah, we're going to plug it into Ethernet for data connectivity, but we got to plug it into the wall with uh, AC to DC adapter to the back of the phone, and that's certainly a possibility. But I would much rather have the circumstance down below where I clean up my desks. You know, let's say this is an executive in our company. They don't want a lot of extra wires. They want to be able to pick up their phone, talk over it, and not see power cables all over the place. This cable, unshielded twisted pair, we're probably going to make it a trunk for providing phone connectivity and data connectivity. We're probably going to have a PC sitting behind it. So we'd probably plug it in, something like that. But this is great. So in order to do this, the switch would have to be power over Ethernet capable. I wouldn't say able, I'd say capable. And when you purchase gear, if you're familiar with making purchases from Cisco, you often, for many different chassis, get this as an option. Especially with the switches that are more likely to be the access layer of your topology. If you need, if you really need power over Ethernet, but your switch doesn't support it, what you can do is you can have an inline power injector. Now in my mind, I'm not going to do this unless I'm using it for wireless access points. Let me ask you, do you run power over Ethernet in your environment? If the answer is yes, what most people say that they use it for is IP phones and wireless access points. I've heard a lot of other purposes of this though. Purposes include um, badged entry, badged entry like time cards or uh, just, you know, taking your badge and, you know, putting it up to the wall to let you in the building and maybe there's some data connectivity for that as well. Uh, surveillance cameras, oh, certainly don't want to forget about that. I've got in my home, little Wi-Fi surveillance systems so that I can watch my pets, actually, uh, when I'm not there and know that they're healthy. But in, a, in an office complex, you might have security cameras that are data. We're going to prefer having them with a wired connection. But then how do we get power to that area? Boy, wouldn't it be great if we supplied power over Ethernet? Well, if your switch didn't have power over Ethernet, you could do this, get a power injector in line, and then you clean up your installation of those security cameras or the wireless access points. And, you know, a clean installation and an effective one is always what we're looking for, and PoE can certainly help. So, how do you power your devices? Well, you can go with a traditional adapter. We're talking about the bricks that you plug in that might have a DC adapter. No problem there. That's the way that the world will continue to work in many cases for the foreseeable future. But if you can, strategically get a few PoE switches, even when you're making a new purchase and let's say, yeah, we think we might need PoE. Get at least a few PoE switches. It costs you a little bit more money, but have that flexibility at least in a few pockets of your environment. And then the power injector. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the power injectors, but you might find a need for it. There certainly are times when you need them, and when you need them, they're there for you. But the big solution here that we're going to get into is PoE switches.